This is a follow-up on the previous video on graphite and magnets. I will try to address questions and suggestions raised in the comment section about the flow demonstration. Questions about the magnetic properties of the graphite flakes and how they might react in a rotating magnetic field I will leave for the next video. But first let me show you what happens to the graphite flakes if I send an electric current through them. I might as well add the magnet at the bottom and see what kind of magnetohydrodynamic motion we get. Let's add some power. Next up I'm going to add about a teaspoon of graphite powder. The water still doesn't have any detergent or other surfactants in it. So most of the graphite as you can see just simply sits on the top of the surface. This does however give a very direct thick layer of graphite for the electricity to go through. Let's see what happens. I can see the resistance changing. More graphite. The layer of surface graphite is sinking into the water, I can see the resistance increasing again. Right, most of the graphite has sunk to the very bottom, forming quite a thick layer. There should now be a really thick layer of graphite at the bottom forming an almost continuous conductor. Resistance is practically the same, a little bit less. Spice things up, I'm going to add some salt. Let's first add power and a nice big spoon of table salt straight over the magnet. I'm surprised to see salt lying right on top of the magnet, undissolved salt, not moving. But I let it stand for a while so that the salt can dissolve. This fluid is deoxidine straight from the bottle, supposedly mostly phosphoric acid. I also added a small amount of mica flakes just for color. For conceptual or educational demonstrations like this, it's fine. But the problem is you have a free surface between two fluids, so at any significant speed you're going to get waves. If you add a glass top to get rid of the waves, then you run into other problems. Much of what you see in terms of 
contrast is really due to three-dimensional turbulence for a two-dimensional problem. All the dark areas are where the flakes are perpendicular to the surface, so you practically look right past them. And the lighter areas are where the flakes are parallel to the surface. So if you add a glass pane touching the surface, then the boundary layer touching that glass pane simply will turn all the flakes parallel to the pane and you end up with the effect of a Venetian blind being shuttered closed and you lose all visibility of the detail flow underneath. Another suggestion was to add vertical lines to this flow demonstration. Let's see if this works. Not perfect, but better than nothing. At least you can see that the flow over the top doesn't meet up with the flow around the bottom.